Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, and in my second look at System Center Orchestrator, I'm going to start to develop a runbook, and I'm going to do that in such a way that it's working with Virtual Machine Manager. There's some really good samples that you can use with Orchestrator, and actually those samples were already developed for its precursor product called Apalis, the product that Microsoft acquired. So if I type into my favorite search engine, Codeplex Apalis, that's going to take me to the Coplex site where there's a lot of community products for all sorts of different Microsoft applications. And if I go here, underneath the parlor 6.3, there's some virtual machine manager um, integration packs and samples that we can use. So if I click on this, I can download these runbooks. And then I can actually load them into the Runbook Designer and Orchestrator, even though they were originally designed for Apollo 6.3. So all I need to do is import them, browse where they've come from in my Downloads folder, and just hit Finish. And now you can see that under my Runbooks now I've got these VMM workflows, and here they all are. And each folder has got multiple runbooks in them. And some runbooks that are in this, this one being a good example, actually reference other runbooks underneath. So it's a good idea to keep them all in the same folder. So this is actually making a call to that. Here's a fairly simple runbook, and I'm going to play a little bit with this one. Now, before I can actually do anything with it, the first thing I need to do is to tell orchestrator about where my virtual machine manager is. This property has been inherited from these runbooks and I just need to change it. So I just go into System Center Virtual Machine Manager here and I'm just going to modify this and this is the way you should use these particular runbooks. If you're designing your own from scratch you could call this anything you want. So I'm just going to edit this and you can see it's looking for vmm.contoso.com. Well that's not the name of my virtual machine manager. My virtual machine manager is scvmm. 2008 R2. I actually need to put that in twice, here and at the bottom here. The other trick I found with this is that you don't want to put any credentials in here. Just blank all of that out, just leave it empty, leave the other defaults here about the ports and so on and so forth, and you're ready to go. and finish. So when I look at a particular object inside Runbook Designer that is using Virtual Machine Manager, like this one, you can see it's picking up that configuration in the top of the shop here, and then I'm actually starting to use it. So let's see how the whole thing fits together. One of the concepts of Runbooks and Orchestrator itself is the idea of a data bus, and any variable upstream of a process then gets, passes the data along to other processes. So if I look in here, for example, I've got three variables, and I could add some more if I wanted to. And all I have to do is give them a name and declare what type they are. So if I look at this one here, it's called VM name, and I can choose whether or not it's an integer or a string. So I've got three variables. And then I just connect that up to this get VM, and the idea here is I just edit this, that that variable there, if I just subscribe and return data, I can choose one of the variables from that custom start. And that's the one I want, the name of the virtual machine. So having got the virtual machine here, I can then pass it along to here. And also what I can do in the process is I can define what success looks like. And in this case, get VM return success. So if that doesn't work, it'll, it'll stop the process and error out. When I go into here, I'm now inheriting a different variable, not the name of the virtual machine, notice its ID. And actually, you can see that we're talking to VMM directly, because if I click the ellipsis here, you can see what we're looking for. And I could actually just hard code in a particular virtual machine. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to have this process um, 
be specified which virtual machine we want to operate on. And so what I've got here is, again with my subscribe data, because this step get VM has returned all of the properties about a virtual machine, you can see they've got the CPU, Max, and what have you, I can take any property I want to use. What I actually need, though, is the virtual machine ID. That one there. OK. I'll just cancel that in case I break it. Now I know which ID I've got, I can stop it. If that's successful here, I can click on the properties here. If the status will stop, so it's actually checking that the virtual machine is stopped. Now I only really need to do that if it's an IDE hard disk I'm trying to fill around with. And then this process here is now giving me a whole bunch of other options I can um, choose. Some of the stuff is coming from my custom start, the ID is coming from my get VM ID. I can choose what type of disk I'm getting and so on and so forth. And some of the other properties are, are, are automatic. Um, or you can hardwire them in. So for example, you can see what kind of properties there are. So you don't need too much knowledge about how Virtual Machine Manager is to design your own process. And then finally what we want to do is start the Virtual Machine afterwards. And now I'm ready to test that this process works OK. And in order to do that, I've got the Runbook Tester up here. Just rearrange things a bit to make it clear what's going on. When I click Run, it's smart enough to realise that actually I need to fill some parameters in. So I'm going to create an IDE disk on Tangerine. And I'm going to make it just 5 gigabytes big. I hit OK. And now the process will start to activate. And this is actually using VMM to do all of this. Now the VMM has stopped the virtual machine, Tangerine, and is adding that new disk in. And once that's been done, it'll start the VM again. So probably time to dive over to SCVMM and see what's going on on this side here. Here's Tangerine. And you can see it's just about to start in a minute. And if I look at its properties, I have indeed got another disk. Although I seem to have made a bit of a mistake with the size of that disk. But you get the idea. Bear in mind that actually won't be that physical size, 405 gigabytes, because I am only creating a placeholder. So you can see it's actually only very, very small at the moment. And that process has now finished. Now I could return all sorts of statuses and confirm the machine's alive, pass information back to a process that calls this. And that custom start, that could have been launched, say, from a service ticket request. So this is just an idea of what you can do with Orchestrator and Virtual Machine Manager. I put some more resources here, and I've been Andrew Fryer. Thank you very much for listening.